My name is Jerry Pratt, and I'm the Economic Development Officer with Clearwater County. Welcome to our premiere episode of what we hope will be an ongoing conversation about a range of topics that impact the lives of our residents and businesses. In this episode, we explore the role of internet access in education. Despite the growing importance of reliable, high-speed internet access to a quality education, large gaps in service remain. More than 10% of Canadians still do not have internet access at home, while rural speeds are on average 10 times slower than urban speeds. The phenomenon is gaining more attention, like this story from CBC's The National. In many ways, the mountainside hamlet of Ryder Lake, BC is a perfect place to raise a family and a few animals. There's plenty of space, but not much in the way of internet. When we moved up to here eight and a half years ago, internet to us as a family was, it was a social thing. It was, it was a nice to have, it wasn't essential. Now it's become essential. Sherry Eggersma says the family pays $150 a month for satellite internet, and the speed of the service means there's barely enough bandwidth for one person to be online. When schools were closed, it was a big problem. It was technically challenging, very challenging, because we had to start picking and choosing basically who was going to be learning and who wasn't. Clearly, the implications for students are dire. The urban-rural divide in connectivity has contributed to an inequality of learning opportunities that is acutely felt here in Clearwater County. As education experts have pointed out, this disparity has led to a homework gap that is dampening the potential of many students. Individual stories of lives disrupted abound across the country, like that of landmark Manitoba resident and mother of five Margie Saucier, who describes her family's routine. My oldest is up at 2 in the morning from probably 12 to 3 in the morning. That's when she does her schoolwork because she says that's when the internet is working. To learn more about what internet access means for local students, I spoke with Tim Bowman, principal of Rocky Elementary, to ask him about the role of internet access in education. Tim, with uh, Rocky Elementary, um, I'd like to do it in three, three parts and to talk about internet and education. What were, what, how were students using the internet before COVID? Uh, the internet, uh... It's changed the way we teach uh, completely. Um, we have access to information. Uh, the, we have access to experts. Um, so kids are using internet every day uh, in the school. Uh, we're lucky to have high quality internet in the school. Uh, so every student at our school has their own uh, Chromebook device to use when they need to uh, for research or for uh, uh, showcasing their work or for presenting it back to the world. And so whether it's the student that's uh, using it or the teacher that's uh, using it um, or, or using it on a daily basis, uh, uh, hours at a time. And then this last year and a half, COVID came yeah. and totally changed education yes. in particular. So could, could you share a little bit about how for elementary school how that changed for elementary school students. Yeah, so we were lucky enough that because every student had their own device, uh, we were able to send those home uh, devices home with students. Uh, but at the same time, uh, those devices require uh, internet to uh, uh, be fully uh, useful at home. And so uh, some of our students had a good, good reliable internet and some did not. Uh, those that did uh, would connect with their teacher on a daily basis uh, and uh, continue to uh, have their studies. Uh, those that did not have good access uh, would either uh, come by the school on a weekly basis and pick up paper um, uh, parts that they could do, or they, uh, they didn't connect with the school and, and uh, uh, they uh, took their uh, we caught them up uh, at a later time. Really slowed down the education process for those uh, students. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Months and months behind, I imagine. Yes. Okay, so thankfully we're seeing a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. Students have been able to be back in school and then out and then back. Yes. <laughs> um, now that uh, we're hoping in September, life is more or less normal. Yes. But... All the changes that happened in education and things that schools learned about providing online services, yes. I'm pretty sure that's changed the way 
some parts of education is probably going to be delivered Absolutely. in the future. Uh, are there any things that you see happening with programs in education, both in the school and maybe even outside the school, on, that are going to change now that uh, internet is just accepted as the way to yeah. uh, deliver certain things? Well, I think uh, uh, we, we used to hoard all of our information uh, in private libraries. Uh, and if you're rich enough to have one, you, ha you had access to information. Now we've got public schools. Uh, and information available now through internet uh, on a regular basis, it's, it's opened up uh, what students can learn. Uh, and again, give them access to experts across the world. Uh, so now the skills have become curating that information and analyzing that information. But, uh, uh, but the access to information is really important. Uh, and, um, and so not only has education now evolved with that access to information, we're now teaching better than we ever have before. The pedagogy has improved dramatically because teachers have access to that information. Right. Uh, and now students have access to that information. Uh, they've got to, uh, their dreams can uh, now come true because they're not hindered by uh, not access to information. In fact, uh, sometimes students can know more about a topic than a Absolutely. teacher because it's available to them. So my background in the music classroom, all the time, I would have a kid uh, go home, a grade seven kid go home on guitar and come back a few months later, much better player than I am. How did you learn that? I learned on YouTube. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. So um, students uh, needing access at home to just to be able to do the regular classes now, right? Like uh, I know uh, with my my kids, when they get a message home, it's like you need to watch this video for class by sure. before class tomorrow, so we can hold a discussion on it. Right. And, uh, that's really limiting for a lot of students in our rural areas that just don't have access right. to be able to watch those videos. Yeah. Well, it, it's first uh, an, an issue of equality uh, for some people to feel like they can participate and others can't. Uh, there's um, people uh, making all kinds of adjustments then in the home to, uh, uh, if they've got limited bandwidth, to be able to have, um, uh, choosing which child can have access to that bandwidth, have access to the device, and so uh, we're having to evolve that way as well. And now as education is evolving here, as we know better, we do better, we're finding, and, and the We've been forced to innovate over this past year, but we found things that worked much better than they did in the past. And okay. so uh, the ideas of some blended inf uh, education, hybrid uh, education being offered, where there's some on the farm, uh, being in a remote location and being in a, in a on-site at the school, uh, those are possibilities now that were never there before. Um, people can have, uh, choose to live and work where they where they want to and still have access to the information if, if uh, they have reliable internet. So Tim, one last question, and uh, maybe it's a little bit on the fun side with okay. students, <laughs> is have you seen any interesting projects that students are taking upon themselves to do because they have access to that information over the internet? Sure. Um, well, I'm, <laughs> I know I'm getting to do a lot more uh, fun projects because we're creating video, we're doing green screen. And because now I have uh, that skill set, I'm doing it with the kids. Uh, and so we're creating uh, videos uh, that are not just videos, but engaging, uh, right. uh, that have the production value that uh, create engagement, that allow them to share what they are learning to the world share that information now to the world uh, in ways that we couldn't do before. Right. Um, so um, a specific example uh, I don't have at the moment, but. Okay. Uh, well, I just think with uh, them learning how to do video work, yes. like this is our first time doing this. Yes. Be able to hire a 12 year old soon to <laughs> do yeah. the work I'm struggling to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our kids have a, a different skill set now because uh, they've been, uh, exposed to it uh, because a YouTube video can teach them uh, some of the tricks of it uh, or at least teach the teacher so that the teacher can right. uh, provide some of that uh, work in the uh, teaching in the classroom. I was a scout leader here in the community for several years yeah. and um, 
I was always amazed with what some of these youth would come to our meetings and we talk about what they're interested in, what they know about. Yeah. And because of internet access, they knew on certain topics, they knew stuff very in depth mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have been able to 20 years ago sure. without actually being involved at a location where they had that item, right? right? It's like, um, some were some were into the camping side and they knew a lot about camping, yeah. but others were more into building or right. as you said, music. Sure. And they just knew, they knew the theory, they knew the history, they knew yes. all these things because they could just look it up and yes. somebody's written stories or essays about it. Other people have done videos about it. Right. So when I say access to experts, so, so we're able to get author visits right into the classroom, even though the author oh, cool. isn't. Uh, he's located in Edmonton, Toronto. Uh, um, my uh, my daughter is doing painting art with uh, experts from New York. Uh, uh, so having people from uh, uh, cooking, my my kids are learning how to cook uh, through the internet. Uh, wow! So last year our, fr our French monitor was uh, so we have a French language assistant. She her home is in Quebec, but she'd come to live in Rocky last year. And uh, when uh, we got shut down, COVID happened, uh, she was located in Quebec then for the last four months of the school year, uh, but she continued to interact with the kids and she created this uh, cooking show and, and practicing French language with the kids uh, uh, from across the country. Uh, hmm. It turned out to be very popular and uh, couldn't have been done in uh, That's another cool. era. I can imagine, um, you know, before long, it's possible to host a social studies class with students from Alberta and from New Brunswick and mm -hmm. from Ontario all at the same time. Absolutely. And they could have some discussions about, you know, uh, the different impacts of history mm -hmm. in their areas. Yes. And, and so our students in Alberta wouldn't just get an Alberta perspective. They yes. would have a truly national perspective. Indeed. Yeah. I think of, um, oh, the astronaut who, uh, just several years ago, was able to do stuff. Yeah, he, yeah, he did the presentation to students from yes. the ISS. Yes, um, and the the potential for yes. you you can live on a farm so, in rural Alberta and still have access to that. Yes. So imagine, yeah, as a kid, you didn't know anything about space unless uh, you read a little bit about it. But imagine having access to Chris Hadfield. Uh, uh, with it. Uh, I, I know I, I had kids do research projects, things that they're really interested in, uh, to be able to actually email an expert in the field and have them reply back. Uh, uh, that's that's really uh, changing. Uh, well, because the uh, information an expert can give you is uh, many years of study uh, right. and be able to transfer that into a a student yes. and and be able to combine their expertise and their passion yeah. in a presentation to the students as well like, yeah well i look forward to seeing where um education is going to go with all this mm -hmm. especially now after covid it's more accepted and people have adapted and you're using it yes uh, and the students well they the students readily <laughs> embrace this before most adults did i think yeah yeah we find uh, Something done on a computer is very engaging to our students uh, often. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's built in uh, high education. Okay, well, thank you, Tim. I really appreciate you coming in today. Yeah. Well, that was my conversation with Tim Bowman of Rocky Elementary. We appreciate his insights, which eloquently highlight the importance of high-speed, reliable internet access to the well-being of our students. We hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. I know I did. For more information about Clearwater County's broadband internet project, please visit www.clearwatercounty.ca slash broadband and follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up to date on county news. Check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash clearwatercounty to view upcoming episodes and other county videos. That's it for this first episode. Stay tuned for more. My name is Jerry Pratt and thank you for joining us.